Hello, I am Dr. Nayan. You are watching Biodesk. Today, in this session, we shall discuss some conceptual questions related with blood circulation. These are often asked in exam for short or very short answer type questions. One of the important question: what is blood? What are the components of blood? Remember in circulatory system, we have seen blood circulation includes three major components and they are the heart, blood and blood vessels. So blood is one of the component of blood circulation. Blood is a red colored liquid connective tissue. The chief components of blood are plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. Blood thus forms the chief transporting medium of the body. One other question, what are the main functions of blood? We can say blood transports the nutrients, respiratory gases and hormones to different parts of the body and waste substances to excretory organs. It maintains body temperature and protects the body from harmful germs. In this diagram, you can see the three components of circulatory system. One is heart, another the blood vessels shown here in two different colors, one for distributing blood, another for collecting blood and the blood is the liquid substance here. One another question, why is plasma important? What are its functions? Plasma is yellowish and transparent liquid substance that constitutes about 55% of the blood. It provides the liquid medium for the flow of different materials. Its main functions include to maintain amount of water content, to help in blood clotting and to protect from invading microbes. Microbes are the germs which cause different types of infections. So blood plasma, the circulatory medium for different materials. Let us move towards another question. What is the effect of decrease in number of red blood cells in the body? The decrease in number of RBCs or red blood cells in the body reduces the oxygen carrying capacity of blood. This results in lower level of energy in the body. So the person gets tired soon. Remember RBCs contain hemoglobin which has great affinity with oxygen. What is the disadvantage of having more white blood corpuscles? White blood corpuscles or leukocytes also called internal soldier of the body we have discussed in the chapter so here we say WBCs destroy the germs and debris in the body but if its number remains higher than the normal for a long time then the person may suffer from a disease called leukemia this is also called blood cancer. One another important question. Explain briefly the structure of heart. The heart is a conical muscular pumping organ that keeps the blood in circulation. It has four chambers. They are right auricle, left auricle, right ventricle and left ventricle. Auricles are upper thin wall chambers that receive blood from different parts of the body while the lower ventricles are thick wall chambers that pump the blood to various parts of the body. Remember in the chapter we have discussed four chambered heart, two auricles, two ventricles, auricles receiving chamber, ventricles pumping chamber. One another question. What substances do cells and tissues get from capillaries? During circulation, blood transports various materials. 
So here the answer is cells and tissues get nutrients and oxygen through capillaries. Which blood vessels take part in blood circulation? Write down their functions. We have studied previously blood vessels are of three different types arteries, veins, capillaries. So here we say arteries, veins and capillaries are blood vessels that take part in blood circulation. Arteries carry oxygenated blood to different parts of the body except pulmonary artery. The veins bring deoxygenated blood to the heart from different organs except pulmonary veins. Capillaries connect arteries with veins in the form of network. One another question. Which blood vessels take impure blood to right auricle and pure blood to left auricle? Superior vena cava and inferior vena cava carry impure blood to the right auricle, while pulmonary veins carry pure blood to the left auricle. Let us see the diagram. The heart remains connected with different blood vessels. The blood vessels connected with the two ventricles are called aorta. Pulmonary aorta arising from right ventricle carries deoxygenated blood to the lungs and pulmonary veins carrying blood from the lungs to the left auricle. This one collects oxygenated blood. So that is the answer here. One other question. What do you understand by heartbeat? When does it increase? The heart contracts and relaxes regularly and alternately. One successive contraction and relaxation constitutes one heartbeat. The heartbeat increases with tension, physical exercise, fear and fever. Let us move towards another question. Here the question is, what is blood pressure? If a person has a blood pressure of 120 by 80 mmHg, what does it mean? Blood pressure is the force exerted by blood on the walls of heart and the blood vessels. If a person has a blood pressure of 120 by 80 mmHg, it means that the person has 120 mmHg systolic blood pressure and 80 mmHg diastolic blood pressure. So higher value is systolic and lower value is the diastolic blood pressure. This is the normal value found in healthy resting adults. Let us move towards one another question. What is systemic circulation? Remember, during the study of blood circulation, we have seen two different types of circulation are found in our body. One is pulmonary circulation, another systemic circulation. So about systemic circulation, we say the circulation between heart and various parts of the body except lungs is called systemic circulation. It distributes blood to different parts of the body. And what is pulmonary circulation? So remember, pulmonary term is related with lungs. The circulation between heart and lungs is called pulmonary circulation. It collects blood from different parts of the body to the heart. Let us move towards some reasoning questions. Here we have one of the important reasoning question. Left ventricle has more muscles than right ventricle. Right ventricle pumps the blood to the two lungs situated on either side of the heart. However, the left ventricle has to pump the blood to all other parts of the body. Thus, left ventricle has to pump the blood with more force. That is why the left ventricle is more muscular. You may see in the diagram also, the lower chambers are the ventricles. Ventricles are the pumping chambers of the heart. 
and if you observe the wall of the left ventricle it is thicker than that of right ventricle and this difference is due to their force the left ventricle pumps the blood throughout the body with more force that's why it is more muscular one another question wall of artery has thick muscles arteries receive the blood directly from the heart which is under high pressure in order to tolerate high blood pressure arteries have thick muscular walls next one veins have valves while studying the diagram of arteries and veins we have seen internal details there is very low blood pressure in veins as compared to arteries so in order to keep the blood flow in one direction only veins possess valves and another important question right auricle is larger than left auricle right auricle receives deoxygenated blood from different parts of the body while the left auricle receives oxygenated blood only from the two lungs thus the amount of blood entering the right auricle is more than that of left auricle that's why right auricle is larger than left auricle now we shall see some differentiating questions differences between red blood corpuscle and white blood corpuscle red blood corpuscle is red in color white blood corpuscle is colorless keep in mind name is confusing white blood corpuscle is colorless red blood corpuscle is circular biconcave and non nucleated however wbc is spherical or irregular in shape and nucleated rbc contains hemoglobin while wbc has no hemoglobin rbcs are more in number counting about 5 million per cubic millimeter of blood however wbcs are less in number these count about 7000 to 11000 per cubic millimeter of blood rbc transports oxygen and carbon dioxide while wbc is protects the body against infections now let us see the differences between artery and vein both are blood vessels both carry blood but there are certain differences between them artery is thick walled blood vessels while vein is thin walled blood vessel artery has no valve vein bears valve the lumen or the inner space in artery is relatively small in vein it is relatively large artery carries blood away from heart while vein carries blood towards the heart most arteries carry oxygenated blood while most veins carry deoxygenated blood now move to another question the differences between pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein both are connected with lungs but one is artery another vein so remember the difference pulmonary artery arises from right ventricle of the heart pulmonary vein arises from the lungs pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood pulmonary vein carries oxygenated blood pulmonary artery supplies blood to the lungs pulmonary vein supplies blood to the left auricle pulmonary artery has relatively thicker walls pulmonary vein has relatively thinner walls now 
let us see the differences between tricuspid valve and bicuspid valve. Remember, bicuspid valve is also called mitral valve. Tricuspid valve consists of three membranous flaps, while bicuspid valve consists of two membranous flaps only. Tricuspid valve is present in the right side of the heart, while bicuspid valve is present in the left side of the heart. Tricuspid valve opens into right ventricle, bicuspid valve opens into left ventricle. Tricuspid valve regulates the flow of impure blood, while bicuspid valve regulates the flow of pure blood. This is all about some important conceptual questions related with blood circulation. Hope this session was useful. Stay tuned for upcoming videos. Do like and share this video and subscribe our channel. See you in the next one. Thank you.